A Guild Wars 2 tactical overlay, or in short TACO, is a third-party application loaded with helpful tools. You can find the common overlay features like boss timer, but what makes this one so unique are 3D markers that can be placed anywhere in the game. Before we begin, let's talk about topic what bothers you now. Is it legal? Can I get banned? You will probably never get a clear yes or no from ArenaNet simply because it would force them to ongoing supervision over future releases. This app is an overlay. It doesn't manipulate with the game client bar anyway. All user data are provided by official API and author deliberately avoided any feature what could possibly get you banned. Long story short, you can safely use it as much as any writing or video guide on the internet. Installation is simple. Just go to Teco website, a link is in the description, and download the latest version. Unpack archive somewhere and launch it by gw2teco.exe as admin. Teco has its own set of default markers and also guides for lots of contents, but sooner or later you'll want to add markers made by other people. It's again very simple. Download custom markers and move them to POI folder inside Taco. Next to PvP icon in game will pop up new one what opens app menu. It can be a little bit confusing at the beginning since some sub options shows up only if you activate other. The most interesting feature of this app are markers. In multiple categories you can find markers for all kinds of stuff. For example, chests in various maps, spots for achievements or guide through jumping puzzles. You can also place your own markers. Use ones already existing in one of categories or create your own custom markers and share them. Placing your own markers is easy. You have one key for placing and another for removing. A key binding can be changed in the menu. You can also toggle a marker editor. With it enabled, small options window will pop up once you step close to any marker. You can change two things. Marker type changes marker you're standing on. While default marker type select marker what you will place down as default from now on. You can modify markers even further, but about it later. From other interesting features we have your range circles. It basically shows skills radiuses around your character. Quite handy for precise banner placements and such. I've also found another creative way how to utilize them. When you're placing markers it really helps with quick distance measuring. Tactical compass can be very handy in raids, for example, like on Sabatha cannons. Speaking of Sabatha, Teco has helpful on-screen messages, in this case, time to next cannon spawn. You can toggle them by clicking on location timers. HP Grids puts face markers on boss's HP bar in raids, but since you can now show health percentage in the game, it probably doesn't have much usage anymore. Mouse highlight is a very interesting feature. Probably everyone at least once lost track of cursor on the screen and something bad happens because of that. Now you can turn on cursor guidelines. A color can be customized but sadly not opacity. Map timer window shows up world boss and event timers. You can toggle on and off different zones in normal and compact mode. Unfortunately the window itself can't be moved. Or at least I didn't find a way how to do it. TeamSpeak window shows people talking in your group. Handy if you play with strangers. And again, I didn't found a way how to move that window. Now, let's take a closer look at creating your own markers and its further modifying with custom variables. For all following stuff, I've also made a short writing guide with examples on my website. A link is in the description. Modifying and creating your own markers require editing of XML files, but don't worry, it's very easy to do. You can open XML files in Notepad, but I will recommend some better software like PSPAD or Notepad++. Both are free. As first, make some marker image in your favorite editor and save it as PNG file into Teco data folder. I've made for demonstration this white square and name it square.png. Now we have to add it to Teco menu. 
Marker categories and marker settings are stored in categoryData.xml, so open it up. Writing the whole thing from scratch can be difficult for beginners, so just copy and paste category template from my website. Paste it under tag overlay data and then customize variables as needed. As you see, each category begins with bracket marker category and ends on separate row by another marker category with slash after a bracket. Let's call them open and close tags. If you wanna add another category below, just place another open and closing tag under the first one. In case of subcategory, add open and close tag between open and closing tag of the parent category. An open tag is also a place where you put all variables. It's always in format variables, equals and value between quotes. Each category has to be defined at least with a variable name. This one is identifier, so make sure it's something unique what can possibly interfere with other people markers. Display name will be shown in tag or menu instead of name. Unlike name, it doesn't have to be unique and can be fancy with spaces. Marker icon code looks a bit different. On top of that, it's even more confusing, because markers also use tag marker category. But it doesn't have open and close tag, instead it's only open tag and closing slash is on the end before bracket, all in one row. Markers has to be placed between category open and close tag. Same as category, it has to use variable name. Again, display name will make it look fancy in the menu. Another required variable is icon file. The value of this one will be path to marker image in the data folder. You can also add other variables. Icon size make marker bigger or smaller than the original icon. Default value is 1.0. Fade near determine at what distance marker starts fading off. Fade far determines point where it completely disappears. Alpha set marker transparency. Default is 1.0. Height offset, changing icon offset from its original coordinates. A default value is 1.5. I found it very handy for making path where you need markers sort of lay on the ground, not floating mid-air. Reset length, determine time in seconds before marker reappear after disabling. This will only work with behavior 4. The last variable is behavior. Currently, there are 8 types represented by numbers from 0 to 7, where 0 is the default static non-interactive marker. Markers with this option can be temporarily disabled in-game by pressing F. Behavior value determine in what circumstances marker reappear. You can see the description of each number on screen or check writing part of this guide on my website. Now, when you edit your own category and marker, just save XML file, restart Taco and start with marking. You can also make some further adjustments once you place them. All placed markers are stored in poidata.xml in Taco main folder. Each is again written as an open tag called poi with closing slash on the end. It always comes with two identifiers what you should never change if you want to make it work. Those are map ID and GUID. Variables y pose, x pose and z pose represent marker coordinates in the game. Changing those can be handy if you want to put marker on place where you can go. Type determine what marker from a menu is used in format category.subcategory.marker itself. All placed markers will use variables set in category data.xml as a default. But you can add those variables for each marker in poidata.xml as well. And if you do, they will be used instead of the default. Sharing markers is also something you can do quite easily. Once you have all set, copy your poidata.xml into POI's folder and rename it to mymarkers.xml for example. If you use some custom icons, copy them from data folder to data in POI folder. If you made your own markers, you have to also copy your category structure from categoryData.xml to mymarkers.xml. An example of finished file is in the guide on my website as well. Once done, just share those files with others. That's all I had for today, so if you enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe or leave a comment and stay tuned for next time.